Okay. Hi, this is Catherine Schneider from the Fitchburg <clears throat> Historical Society. And this afternoon, uh, we have our two guests today are from the Fitchburg Historical Society board, and they are Carol Kinney and Ann White. So we're so happy to have you both with us this afternoon on, on the same computer. Uh, so it's easy, easy to interview you both. And our topic today, uh, because it's summertime, it seemed like a good time to talk about 4-H. And uh, because both of you have been 4-H leaders, you um, know a lot about 4-H and particularly uh, in, in Fitchburg. So I thought the first question to ask you would be um, about you know, the big picture of 4-H, what 4-H is, um, who it's for, how long it's been in existence, uh, how it's structured. Can you tell us just kind of about 4-H in general? Well, I can start out. <laughs> Um, it was founded in Clark County, Ohio, uh, by a man by the name of A.B. Graham, and uh, <clears throat> he started a youth program back then, and it's considered, actually considered the birth of 4-H in the U.S., which was something I didn't know until I started reading up on this. He wanted youth to engage in activities that would promote leadership, communication, uh, critical thinking skills. And I think we could say that those things are, <clears throat> are uh, needed for a solid foundation in everything we do. You know, we need to uh, have a leadership. We need to be able to communicate and to think. Uh, for example, taking a 4-H'er, uh, he gets up before the group and talks about what project that he has made or set up to be put in the fair. And, uh, you know, that gives him a chance to use things like good communication, thinking of how he's going to explain, he or she, all the way through, uh, is going to explain, you know, how they did this project. It's an after-school uh, group. We used to uh, meet on Mondays, right? Monday evenings, once a month. And it's really sponsored by Dane County uh, UW Extension. And uh, usually, like I say, they meet once a month. And there are currently 44 clubs in Dane County. I actually had a call the, the place to find out for sure if there were still 44. And she said, absolutely, there are 44 clubs. That's a lot of clubs. Um, they take in grades kindergarten through high school, but the kindergarten kids through about age to third grade, maybe, or starting in third grade, then they become regular 4 Hers, And um, the the kindergarten through that age, which is probably what, like seven, seven years old or so. Years. Yeah, seven or eight years old. They, um, they will have projects too, but they're called clover buds. And what they all get are the same type of ribbon. And that makes them excited. And they do some beautiful things. When you go to the fair, be sure you look at, you know, what those little clover buds do. And they're excited about it and it gets them started in the regular 4-H. Uh, so they're really not involved in competition. They don't need competition at that age. They have their constitution. And I'm just holding one up from a long time ago, but it's all pretty much the same. Uh, it says Fitchburg Fireflies 4-H Club. And it's uh, <clears throat> interesting to note at the end, it says membership is open to all youth, irrespective of race, color, or national origin. And that was written quite a while ago. And besides this, um, each club tries to have a calendar of some kind. And the calendar really helps parents to know what's going to be going on, who's in the club, what they're taking. And it depends on how much time is spent making up this calendar. But I think it's really nice. We found it helpful. And then we add in what um, projects they're going to be taking so that all the parents in the club know what other kids are taking too. That gives us a really good idea of how it's uh, structured and you know its origins. Uh, and then a lot of organization to it, of course, as you have been involved in it as, as uh, parents and leaders. Um, could you tell us what the 4-H stands for? Lots of people go, oh, okay, 4-H, they've heard of that, but why 4-H? 4-H is our head, heart, hands, and health. 
and his head stands for decision making, planning, organization, problem solving, and using knowledge throughout life. And heart stands for strong personal values, positive self concept, concerns for others, cooperation, and communications. Hands stand for volunteering, community service, and reaching out to create a more equitable world. And health stands for healthy lifestyles, characters, stress management, and disease, disease prevention. And also we have a pledge. And the 4-H pledge is a way to get a glimpse of what 4-H members and leaders focus on in the year-round youth development program. The pledge is, I pledge my head for clearer thinking, my heart to greater loyalty, my hands to larger service, and my health for better living for my club, my community, my country, and my world. That's beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, that expresses so much of what 4-H is about. Yeah. Um, and so let's uh, let's talk a little bit about what your your role has been uh, on the local level in Fitchburg uh, with 4-H, and <clears throat> tell us about well, you know, your club's name, where it was located, what years you were involved in 4-H, um, and then do you know any other 4-H uh, uh, clubs in Fitchburg, either in the past or the present? Okay, well, I kind of did a little research, too, <laughs> to make sure I knew exactly. Um, of course, on the local level, I was a club leader, and um, and I did work with Ann, as you know, for a few years anyway, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Seemed like a long time. It was a long time ago. <laughs> we enjoyed it, though. We enjoyed it. Um, she has two sons, and we have three sons, so we had a lot of kids in 4-H. And um, as far as how... The club got started itself. As far as we could figure out, uh, it went back to a woman by the name of Betty Radke, uh, who actually the name is familiar here in Fitchburg, if you live out in this area. Um, and then my mother-in-law came on. This was uh, early, about 1961. And then my mother-in-law came around about 63, Mary Kinney. And she suggested that, well, why don't we name this club Fitchburg Fireflies? Because back then, <laughs> it seemed like, well, it even seems like to me a long time ago, in the winter when you'd walk out, now I shouldn't say in the winter, but in the evening, you walk up the road and you'd see all these fireflies. You don't see as many now. We don't anyway out here on Irish Lane. We don't see a lot of fireflies. But anyway, it did back then. And she suggested Fitchburg Fireflies. And they thought, well, that's good. The FF, it's with fireflies, it sounds good. And I remember when Mary told me about that, she said, I just thought that would be a nice name. I said, well, good, because it's stuck all these years. <laughs> and she was also a club leader from what I see. And they have the whole thing listed in their history that for about six years, she was a club leader. I actually looked up in um, the Darling and O'Brien book, the history book, Fitchburg History, you know, that brown book that they put out. And they did say that there was a club that was led by Otis Onsrud. And I have heard of his name. I think there's a Stoneman connection there. But anyway, Otis Onsrud. And that um, they called his club. And then there was another club. I don't think I found any name for that club. But anyway, he had a club. And then another okay. club was the Nine Springs Offsprings. And I do remember them. They eventually merged with the Fitchburg Fireflies. You know that because they were so small. And um, so I was the leader maybe for, I don't know, <laughs> stop laughing, <laughs> for a long time here in Fitchburg. And then when our last son was a senior in high school and he was going to be out of 4 H. Uh, Genealogy became really popular and everybody was looking into, you know, their family history and all that. And Harry Papke was the Dane County agent at the time. And uh, he knew we were very interested in it, especially our son, Tom. So he asked Tom and myself if we would write up something for history and heritage that, so that kids could enter these projects in the fair. So that's what we did. Tom and I got together and with Harry and wrote up the thing that could be put in this book. Booklet. This is the 2021 last year's booklet. I don't even know if they're making any booklets, not because everything's online. There might be a few, I think, even last year. They, I don't know how many made that I happened to get one. 
And um, <clears throat> anyway, so then in the back, they did start uh, history and heritage, and it's all about your family tree. So anyway, we helped him, we helped Harry, and Harry passed away, you know, in uh, 2019, I believe. He was about 80, 80 some, 86 or something like that. And so all of a sudden they tell me I was a, the chairperson for this. <laughs> I said, oh, so okay. And then they gave me another department. I had youth leadership and self-determined projects. I didn't mind it though. I, I enjoyed it all. That's what I can tell you about the first clubs. I thought that was interesting that Otis Anzrud though, and that would have been back in the 50s and 60s. Well, actually, Carol, uh, I was part of that club, so I can tell you the name, the name of it. The name of it was the Stoner Rockets, and we were located in the, oh. our location was in the uh, country school, Stoner School. Um, so it was uh, an organization that my family belonged to. So interesting that we have clubs that sometimes come for a while and then and then go as, yeah. as the community changes. But the 4-H fire, the Fitchburg Fireflies are still in existence, aren't they? They still, yes, they are. they still and so a very uh, strong uh, history there all the way through. And can you tell us the location, kind of the general location of those who belong to the um, Fitchburg Fireflies? Are they in the eastern part of Fitchburg? I'm just wondering, or, or anywhere in Fitchburg? Anywhere in Fitchburg, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. Our son Edward actually was, um, when his two daughters were in, which is just a few years ago, um, he was a, he actually took over the leadership of Fitchburg Fireflies. And that was kind of fun. I met at the city hall. And uh, now I will give you his name. Eric Vincent is the current leader of Fitchburg Fireflies. And, um, so it's kind of nice that they're still going and, and really enjoying, but it takes in uh, any of the kids. They could be in the Oregon School District. Of course, we ourselves are in the Oregon School District because we're on Irish Lane and they split Irish Lane from about phase down. Uh, we're all in that, you know, and so you do take in Oregon and Madison and any Catholic schools. And we certainly had Edgewood Campus. You get any of the Catholic schools in the tour, it doesn't make any difference. And that's the neat part. And I think this is what the kids liked about that because when they went to a meeting, they looked forward to it. I don't, you know, and uh, my son Edward said too, yeah, they look forward to going to those meetings because they do meet other kids that they don't just have in school, in their school, they meet kids from other schools too. Mm -hmm. But as you know, that's the way Fitchburg is kind of divided up anyway, yes. we are in different schools. Right. Yes. Okay. So an opportunity, an opportunity for the kids to get to know each other on a different ah. level than just their school community. Right. Um, well, let's go to uh, a little bit about the activities that 4-H, 4-Hers do. What, what's involved in 4-H? What do they do during the year? Things we did, we had, we had chances to extension made it available for us to have ski lessons out of Tyro Basin was one of the things oh, that's how I got into skiing. And we had a fundraiser for the extension and we made pizzas. We had an assembly line for pizzas. We have a table and you have, everybody had their spot to put different things onto the pizza and at the end it wrapped it up. And we made thousands of pizzas in this production line and stuff like that. And my kids went to um, what we call Upland Woods camp up at the Delks for a couple of days and stuff like that. So, but uh, I think there's other things they can do now. And, but I'm, like I said, it's been 20 years since I've been in here at <laughs> 4-H and stuff. But uh, that's what I remember about 4-H and the kids enjoyed that part. Mm -hmm. Well, sure. lots, of, lots of things to keep the kids uh, busy, engaged yeah. and, and learning, you know, all through mm -hmm. these activities. Well, since it's July and the Dane County Fair is always held in July, seems like a good opportunity to talk about the importance of the fair in the life of a 4-H member. Would you like to talk about, so what's that about? <laughs> well, you can take your, thing, your projects to the fair and you give ribbons and stuff and you should tell people you actually can get earn yourself some money on these ribbons. Like if you got a blue ribbon, you get about a dollar seventy-five, and you got a red ribbon it was a dollar fifty, and white was a dollar and a quarter. And if you got pink, you got a dollar. So I mean, you did make some money with your projects and stuff, and you got to be proud of it. And sometimes some of these projects were very extra, and you got to go to the state fair. 
with your project and stuff. That's my son to pick uh, air bone arrow quiver holder to a state fair park or the state fair and stuff like that. So we had to go down there and see it. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty special to be chosen to go on to the state yeah. fair, wasn't it? Right. right. And would, do you want to elaborate a little bit on like specifically what some of those projects were? Um, you know, what, what kinds of projects did the kids take to the fair? You name it, they got it. <laughs> yeah, you name it, they can do, they can go into almost Girls anything. for food, clothing, and this and that. And if you're a farm kid, you got your animals that you could take. Or mm -hmm. if, like my son was in the archery and he would shoot and he would leather work and things like that. It branches out to what you get involved in. Things like that. What yeah, like I that. found they too when our uh, two little granddaughters were in it, and that was was the leader. I mean, they were into drawing and painting, and they'd say, "Grandma, would you go over and see what I got at the fair?" You know, things that they drew, and it was just you know really fun. It really involves the family and the kids, and gives them you know really constructive things to work on. And yet, you're under no pressure. You know, it isn't even like going to school. It's like you can pick out and you can pick out the number of projects. Some kids pick out a lot of projects. <laughs> they don't have to, you know, put something in the fair for each one, but they should be putting something in. But, you know, they may take other projects that they don't intend to put anything in the fair for. But um, there are some other things, model airplanes, electricity, woodworking, mechanical projects natural science, forestry, fishing, there's so many things. Um, a big thing is that when you're leaders, as we found out, you have to get leaders then from any the project. kids' parents, yeah, so that any project that the kid wants to take, if you don't have anybody, for instance, in your club that knows a lot about fishing, I remember one kid wanted to do fishing, I thought, I don't know who's gonna be able to, you can also ask, so a uh, leader in another club, do you have, uh, you know, are any of your kids going into fishing or doing this or that? And uh, so that they almost always, we could come up with somebody, some leader, yeah, that would be willing to take the kids. The whole family would become yeah. very engaged in the 4-H mm -hmm. together, parents right. offering leadership and then the children, the children learning from their projects. And which brings me to my next question, which is maybe highlighting some of those unique opportunities that were offered in 4-H for youngsters to like grow in their confidence and their skills. Sure, we have the, pre the president right from the beginning in right. September, they vote on the president, vice president, treasurer, the whole thing, just like a typical, yes. And they take that seriously and they sit up there and they are the officers. And um, learning how to run a meeting, just, learning how to run a yeah. meeting. And, yeah, yeah, we sit back, you know, and uh, with they the run. kids, and they run the meeting itself. And, and they were supposed to, each one was supposed to eventually during the year show their project. Maybe I mentioned that no matter what stage of the game, even if they were still working on it, they could bring it and say, well, I'm working on putting this airplane together and so forth. And they show what they have. The main idea is they are to get up there and you know, they're developing self-confidence, communications, all these things that this guy from the very beginning thought about when he set up 4-H that they're developing mm -hmm. those skills. Those things you mentioned right at the beginning, you saw happening right within within your own club. Didn't you saw you? it in your own club, right, yeah. You just felt like it was very worthwhile and the kids liked it so much. And, mm -hmm. They were all interested enough. Maybe some of them didn't know one another before and they get to know each other. And you didn't have a lot of rivalry or anything. We, I don't think so. We were very fortunate that the kids, uh, maybe just having a mixture of kids like that, a lot of them who didn't go to school with one another, it, it actually helped. Mm -hmm. just, you know. Well, do you have any favorite memories to share about your time in 4-H? <laughs> a lot of them. <laughs> <My favorite. laughs> yeah. No, seriously, and kids are just interesting to deal with in general. Yeah. You know, sometimes you get the littler kid that gets up to nine, ten years old. You never know what they're going to say, <laughs> but uh, and you kind of help them along a little bit. And that's part of it, you know, so that they can tell what they have and what they're working on. And, so how do you think 4-H influenced the families involved and then the community? Well, 
we, Ann and I kind of talked about that at one point. I think it had a big influence because you got to know your yeah. neighbors better. I mean, I don't want any names, but I do people just up the road. We got to know their family that we may not have. And it, it's just so nice. We did have every year uh, family a, dinner. Yeah, a big potluck dinner uh, that we held. And we met basically at the city hall. And that's why I think they're still meeting. That's what Ed told me at least when he was leading it, that they were still meeting at City Hall. But this was at City Hall and Fish Hatchery. Yeah, this, they were sure. right. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, um, and the kids helped with that, too. They helped with serving food and all that kind of thing. So that was good for them. Mm -hmm. And the, the families, you just got to know them better. Yeah. It's very interesting, especially when you're talking about having 30, 40 kids in a club or even 20. That's a lot of family members. And uh, it, it was nice. We did get to know a lot of people that we wouldn't have otherwise. So it sounds like 4-H really provided not only for the, um, the children, the 4-Hers themselves, but the whole family was, um, was involved and, and got to know and form, their, form a community of helping those children. And almost like it takes a whole village to raise a child. Yeah. So 4-H, <laughs> exactly. like, like a village to help raise these children and give them skills, confidence, um, and appreciation for one another uh, in being able to show their projects, not only in their own club, but how they were doing and progressing with the projects, how to show them at the fair, being able to um, appreciate the work and labor that goes into producing those projects and then having the feedback from, from, uh, from their own uh, club and the at the fair and then the fun things that were done sounds like a lot of um just appreciation on both your parts for having been a part of forage and then with your leadership in being able to um uh, provide that opportunity for the youngsters and for the whole families so wonderful experience and thank you for sharing that with us today what that's what that's like and continues to be um, and to know that that's available yet to youngsters in the in the community if they would like to join 4-H and take part in some of these wonderful activities and opportunities so mm -hmm. thank you both Aunt Carol Kinney and Ann White and I'll just uh, uh, remind people that our interview will be posted uh, not only on Talking Fitchburg, but also on the uh, Fitchburg Historical Society website, which is fitchburghistory.org. So be sure to check that out for the interview, uh, but also for lots of other information available about the history of Fitchburg.